We're trying to flatten the curve here. So maybe you roll with All Lives Matter. All Lives Matter. No, no, the white, white people already took that. Remember the Black Lives Matter thing uh, a couple years yeah, ago? Yeah, I don't want to be Martin O'Malley. Um, how about like Every Life Matters? Every, uh, it's still close. I don't know if you can run that one. Because yeah, like, you know, people that vote for Trump, their life doesn't matter. Oh, yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, what about like Lockdown Till the Vaccine? Uh, that's like the vaccines like three years from now. Uh, that's like a long time. We Dude. sold them on the whole flat and the curve thing. I don't know if they're going to go for that. No, nah, we're on a 24 hour news cycle. Um, okay. Well, you know, it's a crisis. Like, like remake America in like God's image. So make America great again. Fuck. Uh, and besides most of our constituents are atheists or closet atheists anyways. That's not going to work. True. True. I'm going out all on a limb on this one. Third term for Obama. Michelle or Barack. Who cares? Fuck it. Run it. <laughs> and I'm Steve. I'm Tom. And this is Demagogue News with Things You Need to Know About, Episode 26. H.R. 6800, The uh, Heroes Act. Boy. <laughs> and this one is a doozy. This is a doozy, people. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> uh, the act that just, uh, the bill that passed in the House uh, is a very... Very, very narrow margin, uh, 199 to 208, um, proposed by House Democrats. Yeah, let's uh, maybe let me let's back backpedal a little bit. Uh, the Heroes Act, the second stimulus package, whatever you may have heard that just happened, um, just barely got past the House, right? 208 to 190. This, dude, nine votes. <laughs> yeah, not a lot when you know there's 500 people. 300 people. How many people? 300 are in the house? and some people. Like, yeah. No, if, if you do the math, you know, I don't really, I don't really like math. A two percent margin. Yeah. Let's go with yeah. that. That's like nice and narrow. Uh, it's been passed by the House, going to the Senate, and uh, I've been reading a lot about how great it is. Everyone's gonna get their another 1,200 bucks. Yeah, get some of that fiat currency that doesn't matter. But that's only like the tip of the iceberg. Like, there is a lot of shit in this bill. <laughs> there is actually not only just a lot of shit, it's a, you know, copious, it's a mountain, it's a small country's worth of shit. It's like a manure island, like, it's like chilling. No, no I'm the talking Pacific. like the Aegean, like, it's the size of Cyprus Damn. amount of shit. <laughs> this bill, which, you know, when did they start working on this, this bill? Last week? Yeah, it's... They well, they worked on this bill for fucking months, some you know weeks, I'm sure, but it was it was given to the floor yeah, last like week, six days ago. So, so it was brought up to the floor. There is over 1,800 pages in this bill. Yeah, Steve actually attempted to read it. <laughs> yeah, Tom did more of an overview to get more nickels and dimes. I'm trying to read it. There are 45,000 lines, like 18, like, like when they write bills, they have 25 lines per page. 25 times 1,800 is something like 45,000 lines of stuff. That is 450 notebooks from school. Remember the school notebooks, viral notebooks? I, I honestly don't know if I filled out that many. In yeah, my 450 of them <laughs> have been used up for this bill. Ugh. I <laughs> And it's full of the, the greatest legalese jargon bullshit I've ever fucking... I mean, it is like classic, like... Well, it, it, it's a legal bill. It only makes sense they have all this shit in there. Yeah, all this. Okay, but that being said, um, it's it's honestly like they're just spending it like monopoly money. But we'll go into like the nitty gritty here. Uh, what most people are concerned about, which is what are they getting, is the second round of stimulus checks. You know, twelve hundred dollars. You get a maximum of six k per family. You can get uh, three dependents on there. Right. So your three kids, they get twelve hundred each, plus you and your significant other, six thousand dollars. Uh, you gotta make. You have to do taxes more than twenty five hundred dollars. Make less than seventy five. Every, every hundred dollars minus five. Blah 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 blah. Same as same as last time. Yeah. But instead of five hundred dollars a kid, it's a twelve hundred bucks a kid. So that's the tip. It's, and that's a lot. <laughs> that's I mean that's a lot. We thought it was a lot last time with thirty four hundred dollars per family. Six thousand dollars is what they're going with. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you might as well just start, like, it's a shame. Like, are they basing it off of, like, 2018 dependents? 
Right. Oh, uh, your birthday was in March. You just lost until a hundred fucking dollars. Yeah, like you piece of shit. Like yeah, or even like, could you claim a new dependent like on your twenty nineteen one and be like, yeah, I just had a kid. Like, well, go- uh, you're supposed to do your taxes last month, but nah. they did defer it until what June, <laughs> Jul- July fifteenth. July. Well, uh, if you if you do your taxes tomorrow and it passes tomorrow, that's the government's slow. All right. Yeah, they are. Some people don't have their first round check yet. Yeah, which is also wild. And we're just spending. We, it's like that money gun, you see, but it's is going at a thousand miles an hour, and it's still going to take like years of hundreds. Yeah, years of hundreds. Imagine yeah. a gun that shoots a hundred every like half second, quarter of a second. It'll take you like <laughs> like a no. It's a count, to count from one to a billion going at one per second would take you thirty three years. Yeah, and that's talk- we're talking a trillion so here. Like time- three so trillion. 33 times 1,000, 33,000 years. That's how big a trillion is. Like, we're even trying to figure out the numbers because we're going through this, the breakdown on how much states get. Like, the amount of zeros, like, at this point, it's like. It's like it doesn't even matter anymore. Yeah. Um, and we're that was- Zimbabwe. Yeah, we are Zimbabwe. Dude, I haven't even gotten my unemployment yet, and they're already talking of like a new round of unemployment checks. Again, 600 a week on top of oh, no, what no, you're no, getting. So, yeah, <laughs> we're having a little too much fun over here. Uh, <laughs> so, yes, the top of the list, I would say, is $1,200 stimulus check yet yeah. again. Direct mm-hmm. deposit check, you know, you'll figure it out. Uh, and then under the CARES Act, which is before – our first big stimulus uh, rigmarole. They boosted uh, states' unemployment by six hundred dollars until July. If this of twenty twenty. Now 20, we have to yeah, we have to say the year now. By yeah, the way. of twenty twenty. Because if this Heroes Act passes, that will extend the six hundred dollar boost of unemployment until January twenty twenty one. So until the end of the year, which is crazy. Considering that life will be normal by then, uh, that's the plan, Stan. I mean, much earlier than that. Like, I would expect like life to be completely normal by like September, and that's like a late. I pray, I pray. (laughs) Listen to my podcast, people, which are usually comedians, and now they're apprehensive if they're going to do their shows in October. Yeah, you know, and And that's far out. They're professionals that have to you know create these schedules. You know, very complex schedules, you know, months in advance, and they don't even know they're going to do it then. Let alone our employment in some of the beautiful casinos on the Strip. <laughs> Who knows if that's even going to happen? Oh, yeah, I'm not even, like, holding out hope for that. <laughs> I was even thinking today, being that I'm a, I'm a seasonal person, I may work for MGM and never work a day in my life. How's that for a conundrum? Like, that's weird. Jeez. Uh, yeah. So that, you know, that would push, um, and actually for unemployment benefits, if you're self-employed, you could get them till March of 2021. What? Yeah. Dude, we gotta make an LLC. Dude, I wish we would have done it in February. I know, <laughs> no, we could have gotten the grants, I know. But speaking, of, well, we'll talk about the PPP later, because <laughs> there's just so much stuff in this bill. Like, I don't want to, like, weigh down our podcast with just, like, numbers but like holy christ i think a, a large portion that this is so much more that the the media is saying it is blank yeah this, this is gonna help with the people who need it what a nice easy statement mm-hmm. it's the heroes act it's for it's for people it's for the american people there are 101 things in this bill that are, are either one not relevant to the american people Two, literally are for other nations, quote unquote, and we'll get to yeah, that later. Yeah. That's <laughs> literally are for are for people that aren't supposed to be here. And literally are for things that aren't even relevant to the coronavirus. Because yeah. that's what they do with, with bills, is they put extra random you shit in there. on it. It's just like this is my opportunity to pa- like to pass something. Right. So anything that I wanted. Um and it's so it's still, it's quite dis- depressing actually that th- this is yeah. what we're getting. I'm trying to like right now. I'm just trying to exhale this depression so we have a good, nice podcast. Yeah, here. it's 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 fucky. It's real. And I'm interested yeah. to see how, how this goes on Monday. So I guess so, uh, yeah, because Steve and I we each check like different sources and we like each of them had like different stuff that they highlighted. 
it's like like through a different like like whoever's paradigm you pick like i checked cnbc first and it was very much like geared towards like working class families and stuff of like what's in it for them in the bill and that was it yeah i'm looking at vox and they're going on maybe a bit more of the fringe of the far left democratic kind of ideals no I'm sure nothing. Fox has not much good to say. No, I'm sure that sure Fox is like, and this is like, <laughs> and, and I think as much they're as, making this Mexico. <laughs> as much as we are negative about it, there are some good things in here. There as are. Well. There's a couple, and I, yeah, we will highlight those. And yeah. By a couple, I don't mean like a few. I do mean a couple. A couple, and there are probably 150 things in this bill. I think there are 150 sections that I could count Christ. in this. So yeah, it's not it's not cut and dry, people. This is the opposite of cut and dry. It's government. Well, we're not even to the stuff that we like yet. So I guess going down, one of the things that's getting a lot of publicity is the student loan forgiveness. So in the proposed bill, if you took out student loans, that would include myself, you would get everybody, even people who didn't go to school, <laughs> will help pay back ten thousand dollars of the loans that you agreed to take out. Yeah, before because there's actually more stuff, but just to start with, we'll just subtract ten k from your federal or private loans that you have, student yeah. loans. So that, that we'll just mulligan that ten grand. And it's they can be deferred all the way up to September of 2021, like as far as your like your payments go. Yeah, with no interest accruing. Yeah. So before it was that there will be no interest accruing, but you got to pay them. Now it's just going to put a hard stop. So how's that going to work for our student loan bubble? Uh, not, like the bubble was already going to pop. This is and, going and to accelerate now it. There's no incentive to pay it, huh? Because like, now it would actually be fiduciarily, fiduciarily smart of me that I should just put all the money that I should be paying to my student loans inside of some high interest, you know, savings account. Yeah, exactly. Wait a year, mm -hmm. make some type of profit on it, and then start paying it off. So I'm not gonna. No one. No one's yeah. going to be paying off their student loans at all. I mean, I'm not right now. Like, I'm unemployed and I'm not collecting unemployment. Why the hell would I pay off my student loans? Yeah. And then, you know, there are plenty of people that are, are still working. Only 10% of the U.S. population is actually unemployed or pulling unemployment. I think it's 34 million people are unemployed. We just hit 35, yeah. like, super recently. So, like, we got about 350 in the U.S. That's yeah. 10%, which is terrible, but 250 <laughs> That means that 300 million people are still having some type of employment. Well, yeah, or you also have to think of like babies, old people, like the the number starts because the actual like percentage of working at like adults who could work, it's 25 percent of them are out of the game, like for work quarter. So so three quarters are making cash. Yeah, 75 percent of people are and still working. Anyone that has a loan, then in that section, definitely ain't gonna be paying next month. No, like even if I was if working, passes. it's like why the hell like. <laughs> There's no incentive for me to. Mm -mm. If if you don't, if I don't have to, why would I? Yeah. Why would I? So it's gonna happen. Like, <laughs> okay. So yeah, and that's happening. Yeah. If, this, if this goes past, that will happen. What, what we got next, Tom? Uh, next on the list is rental assistance. So if uh, depending on a lot of states, um, there's been okay in Nevada right now. There's a moratorium on rent. However, this would make it federal. So it would extend the ban on non-payment evictions for like a year after the enacted dates. So, so why pay your rent right now? Yeah, exactly. Why pay your rent? And it, it's this. It's also kind of weird because it's why pay your rent, and at the same time, they're giving out a hundred billion dollars for rental assistance. It's like here's rental assistance money, but don't pay your rent. <laughs> So would that be in a style similar to food stamps that this is not technically a monetary – I'm not giving you cash. I'm going to give you a monetary mm -hmm. instrument that you give to your landlord yeah. that is the same as cash. Yes. Or are they going to give I – mean, I'm pretty sure they won't – they don't have the institution up to do it like SNAP though. Like I'm pretty sure it will just be cash. Will they give that to the tenant or the uh, – the landlord. Um, I imagine that th that these landlords will apply for economic hardship. That we, we need we need some of that money because yeah. people aren't paying. And they're kind of they. I think they should get it if any like if anybody's getting money. Uh, that being said, there's a lot more tenants than there are landlords, and if you're trying to rack up them votes, you would give the money to the tenants. Yeah. 
Well, it's all political at the end of the day anyways. <laughs> yep. So why not? Yeah, you know, but these are you know, all you know, very unbiased, non-self-interested actors. I just want to stress Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Everyone in the government is totally altruistic in all their intentions. <laughs> uh, God, we crack ourselves up. All right. Um, next up for like how it affects actual private citizens, and then I guess the other stuff would be um, – we'll get a little bit more abstract – is hazard pay and this is for essential workers because a lot of them are getting thing shipped. i think should have been done yeah i the, think it's actually something you know, a good thing that steve and i actually agree with this part of the bill uh 200 billion dollars which is actually a lot that's a lot so you can make up to 25k if you're already making less than 200k and 5k if you're making more than that but it's essentially to give you that boost wait twenty five thousand dollars they'll give a person up to so, like, depending on how long they run this out, I think it's supposed to equate to like thirteen dollars per hour on top of what you're already getting paid. That's good because I did the math yesterday yeah. on my unemployment, and I make twenty five dollars an hour. Holy Christ! Being unemployed right now, <laughs> and I'm on the low end of unemployment. My my previous taxes were based off of minimum wage as my employment, plus a little extra on tips as a bartender and I'm making twenty five dollars an hour. So if you had a job that you made decent money and it become unemployed, unemployment's a, a, a proportion of what you made pr- prior. Yeah. Some people are making thirty dollars an hour to be unemployed. That's just wild. So if you worked if if one worked at a big grocery company and they made fourteen dollars an hour, woo I make double what they make and i'm not working yeah people are not working you're making double of people that are working it doesn't make sense it's not a good system that's crazy we're paying out people to not work we're literally the socialist utopia nobody works (laughs) no no no, that's the wrong voice nobody works everyone gets paid that's great i mean it worked for bernie for like the first 40 years of his life yeah it's fine uh yeah and they, I think that there should be some uh, karmic, you know, cycle. Anyone that's been working this entire time possibly put their lives in danger. All yeah. these nurses, we talk about being them being on the front lines. You know, if they get a nice little check at the end of the day, great. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I do support like the hazard pay part of it. Um, do you have anything else to add for like private citizen benefits? Uh, private citizen benefits, uh, not. Uh, Actual citizens. Okay, so we're now we go into like entities and organizations yeah, well, for some weird ones. Uh, yeah, break out the weird stuff, which is a good thing. Section, uh, I believe, I believe it is. is This is very confusing. I don't, don't actually know how to read uh, legislative bills because it's a uh, fucking maze. Section three thousand sixteen, uh, native pharmaceutical manufacturing. I believe, I, as I, if I understood it correctly. That we will be starting up our own uh, pharmaceutical development uh, organization to natively create drugs. Because one of the big things, especially when hydrochloroquine was uh, the buzzword, is that we couldn't get any. And you can't really fault other countries by not selling it to you yeah. if they're going to use it themselves. Exactly. I mean, that's, you know, they're putting their country priorities first. You got to play for your team. I, I got to yeah. respect that because I want to put my country's, mm-hmm. you know, you know, problems first. So we we will be starting a, a program to manufacture pharmaceutical drugs here in the United States. That's great because the fact that we lost all this trade because everyone stopped their borders, we couldn't import drugs from China, which 80% of the world's drugs come from China, kind of sucked, you know, because there's other drugs other than hydrochloroquine, yeah, insulin, every all the, there's a billion drugs out there. Yeah, so I think it's a good thing. No, I'm definitely in favor of that. Because um, robots make drugs. People don't make drugs anymore. Yeah. It's all just robots. I mean, it's, it's mass manufacturing. So I, it's not that hard anyways. Why, why wouldn't we do this to begin with? Yeah, that's – I mean, I guess we just need – this was kind of the kick in the ass. Big kick needed, in the ass. That uh, we shouldn't be relying on China. China. Uh, Other weird stuff. If we want to like go on weird stuff – You go on like, the weird stuff. What did okay. you find? So four hundred ten million dollars to the Census Bureau. Four hundred and ten million dollars. 
Yes. For did, didn't we just do the census already? Did you fill out the census? Hell no. I didn't either. I don't want to be on the radar. Is that off. illegal? Did we just uh, admit to a crime? Care. I don't. I didn't care. do it uh, in Minecraft. I'm pretty sure that I did it in, re- in real life, but in Minecraft, I, I didn't. I didn't do my census. Yeah. I don't know. It says it's legally binding. I don't know. If they want to really talk to me, they'll come to me. I don't really like being legally bound. That's not cool. Yeah. Um, five hundred half a billion dollars. To, yeah, almost. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's great. So, cool. So let's waste more money. One hundred and fifteen. No, hundred point fifteen billion dollars for education funding, which I don't know why, because nobody's in school, and like I think it's also to sort of prop up these it, like universities that are bloated from all this loan money that they're not. Oh, going you to mean be getting. like the uh, Harvard endowment that's forty billion dollars? Yeah, yeah, they really need that money. Steve. Yeah, they they need it bad. These administrators, they're so important. They need to be paid. Um, on Brunch Bang, we should have just snuck that in like for our dumb ones <laughs> and like sneak in a real dumb one. <laughs> Pay the universities more money. They're so useful. Uh, Having a college degree is required. So that's why it should be free. Because education, education edu- should be free for everybody. And healthcare. And healthcare. Uh, I got one, section six, uh, 6201. Uh, apparently, we're restarting uh, like dairy, uh, uh, like redistribution, because a big problem right now, and I'm feeling it at the supermarket, is that there's a meat shortage. Mm-hmm. I can't get any food that I eat right now because the breaking of the supply chain, something, for some reason, it's like with dealerships with cars. You can't buy like Tesla can't sell cars in Texas. Wait, Tangent. Wait. Tesla can't sell cars Wait, really? in Texas. Why? No, because in Texas you must purchase from a dis- um, um, a dealership. It is illegal to buy a car directly from a manufacturer in Texas. Huh. That's all. And these dealership networks, it's always a certain name: Finley, yeah, Gowden. This oligarchy. <laughs> very much so. And so in Texas, people that want to get a car, in te- they go to Oklahoma. They go somewhere else. They can't buy a Tesla in Texas. Hmm. I imagine if, t- if Tesla goes to Texas as a headquarters, oh, that yeah, will change game on. that tax money. But it's the same thing when it comes to a lot of uh, agriculture is that Smithfield mm-hmm. you know, pork that they stopped production because they've had a lot of coronavirus cases. Yeah. Well, they are the ones that package and what is just pigs and they package it in their packaging and they, they distribute to grocery stores like Albertsons, Walmart, Smith's, Vaughn's. And they, those people are the retail uh, organizations that sell directly to the people. But I can't skip Smithfield and go to, you know, Farmer John's farm and purchase a pig. Hmm. It's very difficult to do that. And because of all this breaking down of uh, the supply chain, a lot of animals and plant food is being wasted because it has to be moved. Ship, yeah, we're in a big supply chain, uh, like assembly line kind of manufacturing. If it doesn't get sold, it's trash, basically. Yeah, like Steve was reading some stuff earlier this week, and they were talking about like putting pigs in mass graves. It's like, why in oh, God's no, it, name? Oh no, it's a picture. Uh, I don't know if it's, it's Smithfield, but it's a a row of pigs about a hundred feet long, about ten feet high, which is pig carcasses, because that's how many they were supposed to be sold, and they have to do that because. They can't afford to feed them because they were supposed to be sold. Yeah. Slaughtered. Like, supposed to move. So we're just wasting resources right e- now. Eventually, you fill up the grain silo mm-hmm. full of stuff. And then what do you do now when you have corn that's already ready to get picked in the next acreage? What do you do with it? Will you get? Do you, do you let that sit and rot? Do you? Well, it is better. Do you let it sit and rot? Do you get rid of that grain? Do you just, you know... These aren't things that are supposed to happen. We don't – in the history of the world, we never made too much. It, there's there's never an over-famine. There is a famine-famine. There's, there's no never overabundance. Now we have overabundance, and now the needle's going back to now we're running out of things. So with the government is reinstating in World War II. It was the same thing that happened with dairy, and they made it, a bunch of cheese into it. And started the first welfare program that was government cheese. 
I believe it started in the late 60s or 70s. And apparently that's being started again. Uh, dairy Direct Donation Program will be started to acquire dairy and distribute it. The Triple DP. Triple DP. Yeah, that was a story right there. Y'all learned something. And they're going to spend half a billion dollars doing this. Why? I don't know. <laughs> I don't. I I mean, do you drink milk, Tom? Not anymore, no. I, I don't drink. I, I used to live off of it, like, back in the Latinos day. Latinos don't drink milk. No. Not many Latinos drink milk. My people don't no. drink milk. We can't digest it. That's a white people thing. Yeah, it will. Yeah. I don't know any black people that drink milk. Mm, only, like... And cereal occasionally. See, but that's like that's the one way people get milk is cereal. Yeah. I mean, I don't eat cereal, but but was well, like a glass of milk. Uh, like if it's with like dessert. Yeah, if you had Oreos, yeah. Or no, I haven't had Oreos in a while. No, I've had a lot of things in a while. I don't really cookies. Live. I don't know. I don't live anymore. I uh, life is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> what are the dumb stuff you got, Tom? Uh, dumb stuff. Let's see. Uh, two hundred two billion to CDC funding. Uh, three point six billion in grants to states for elections. What? Yeah, grants to states for elections. Yes. So we are giving them two two billion dollars. Three point six billion to all fifty. Yes. So every year, think it's like forty forty million dollars for elections. Why? I don't know. I, again, I don't know. It's a weird one. Well, among all these things, we're saying. Uh, every state is going to get a billion dollars as just Band-Aid sh- money. Shits and gigs. Yeah. <laughs> like, in- including the District of Columbia. They're getting a mm-hmm. billion dollars by themselves. Uh, just because of the coronavirus allocations, and it's always this wording, uh, to be uh, used until spent. So even if they don't have to use all that money, they have to use all that money. Because budgeting on the federal level and state level Better than any federal government or government agency is retarded. They don't know how to save. I mean, only, only know how to spend. It's super circular too. I think they're trying to do it to stimulate a, like state economies, but all you're doing is taking tax money and then making states spend it on like stuff, on stuff, things, I guess goods and services. It's supposed to be a way for the money to find its way back to taxpayers, but it's not going to evenly do that. Yeah, and uh, that uh, it sounds like you're stealing from Pete to pay Paul. Yeah, that that's exactly what it is. Because one thing that we talked about before, people that are being stolen from will leave the state. New York. Yeah, New York know, is a good example. Too many taxes. Shit sucks right there. Sucks right now. Fuck it, we'll leave. Can't afford. They, New York can't afford for those people to leave, and they'll they'll feel it soon. Which, on top of that, I guess, like, for my biggest weird and really dumb thing, um, new dumb thing that I haven't mentioned before, was uh, $1 trillion to state, local, and territorial, oh, and tribal relief. And this money is su- basically supposed to bail out states that were really shitty at budgeting. So, like, New York. New York, California, Illinois. Those sound like blue states, Tom. You don't say. They're also bailing out like Kentucky and you know Tennessee, the red state. I would like to see like anyone who, a lot of jobs. If you can't fulfill your end of the bargain, you get fired. Maybe there should be an amendment like if you suck at running your state, like maybe you're being a good person, like populist wise. But if you can't run a budget, something basic, like you get insta fired. I mean, it's called an election, though. Yeah, but then it's called an impeachment. And what was the value of that? I mean, you get four years to try it out. Like, I don't think you should fire somebody after one year. Like, oh, you didn't balance the budget. Get the fuck out of here. That's fair. Okay. After four years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then you have an election. So if if you if you never balance the budget in your four years, you become ineligible for election. Ooh. Re-election. There you go. What if you started off in a really bad spot, though? As long as is the if the angles like if you imp- yeah. if you improved okay that's fair. right if you started at negative forty and then you end at negative twenty well then that's yeah, twenty that's point guy. Like, yeah you know. <laughs> even, even though you, it still sucks it's better than where you were yeah but if you go from yeah I don't know I'm not a politician all right you have any more weird stuff uh no let's get to some actual bad stuff the really scary stuff uh, okay. so cool. go for it. on my first end. Uh, among things with illegal immigrants that they will have no cost testing treatment 
that's yeah, that's all good and all. Any everybody who may have the Rona needs to be tested. But among here is that in this bill that illegal immigrants who have a uh, tax identification number will also get this twelve hundred dollar stimulus check, as well as the previous one if they didn't get it in the first place. So people that aren't citizens who might pay taxes, might, will also get a stimulus check that is for the, the U.S. citizens. They're domestic workers, Stephen. I know. The they vocabulary changes by the week, by the day, the hour. I don't know. I don't know. I just use, uh, you know, Encyclopedia Alexandria. <laughs> what? <laughs> Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Uh, Cortez. <laughs> oh. I just say alien sedition acts. Uh, among that, uh, they are going to be releasing people under ICE detention if they have committed a nonviolent crime. Which, um, what the hell? I don't know. But uh, apparently uh, committing the, is it a felony or misdemeanor to cross the border? I, I don't guess know. it depends by the state. But that is now not a crime anymore. And you can leave. Yeah, and you can leave on American soil. Yeah. Like, you can come on the good side of the border. Yeah, yeah we, we don't deport you. In fact, they protect the portions. Yeah, you can find yourself As in a whole, we're city. not definitely yeah. going to deport you. And you will not stay in the country. Okay. Never so let a good crisis go to waste, Right, so we, so we, sh we should just, like, abolish the, you know, ice then. Is that what we're doing? Yeah, just get rid of borders. Screw yeah. it. Yeah, open borders, yes. It's a good policy. MS-13, come on. Um, make everything free and open the borders. Yeah. Make America free again. <laughs> MAFA. MAFA. There you go. My fucking... <laughs> the, <laughs> the MAFA mafia. Right. Ma 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 my fucking cold <laughs> hand, dead hands. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. What do, you, what do you got, Tom? The real shit stuff. Um, Mind gonna... you, these, uh, this has all been written by... The people that we've elected as the smartest ones in the land to be our representation yeah, they're in government. Competent. They're good people. We're not making any of this up. This is all in this bill. Yeah. Um, actually, I'm just going to take a detour to something good real fast. Um, and this will just be a quick bullet point. Uh, $659 billion, uh, for PPP. Not enough small businesses got it last time. So uh, glad that they're getting a little shot in the arm there. And then $10 billion extra for SBA loans. Yeah, I believe the SBA loans is like 9% of... 9% of small businesses were able to use yeah, it before it ran out. It was really bad. Like, yeah. They ran out so fast. So uh, glad that they got a little refill on that. But to something worse, um, $118 billion for child tax credit, which is supposed to help family, like struggling families, like to feed their children and stuff, which like is good on the surface, but you can easily abuse the shit out of that. Yeah, but $110 billion already – when you file your taxes with dependents, you get some pretty yeah, good so pennies back. On top of the benefits that you would be On top of the $6,000 like, you're going to be getting. And that, 600 a week. <laughs> yeah. Why work? Have eight yeah. kids and don't work. Wait. This sounds just like Atlas Shrugged. Like, this is so Atlas Shrugged. No, yeah, this is it's hilarious. It's Brazil, baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, God. It's not Brazil. Thank God I would... It would be terrible. Yeah, I don't want to live in that world. Yeah, uh, maybe I would be the. I'd be an engineer. It'd be fun. Be part you of the Tuttle cent Central Services. Oh yeah. no, you want to be like one well, of the I want to be Tuttle. I want to be a rebel. Yeah. Slash, heating engineer. I'm, what in, a in, combo! In it, I'm in it for the excitement, you know. Yeah, we watched Brazil a couple of nights ago. If you haven't watched it, um, I was, yeah, it was yesterday, Tom. Was it yesterday? It was yesterday. It was last night, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Oh wow. We were terrified. Yeah, my uh, my days that just don't make dystopian sense. dystopian utopias don't sound like fun. As we barrel straight forward to dystopian utopia, um, it's fantastic. All right. Um, other bad stuff. Uh, I just want to reiterate that the U United States Postal Service is but still I was getting about to say the post office <laughs> still getting twenty five billion. Those bastards! What a waste of taxpayer money. UPS and FedEx are better than the post office, but no, we can, because the the ones I'm going to mock the Constitution because it's in the Constitution. We got to keep spending money on it and have crazy government pensions that. Mm spend way too much money and put cities and uh, states in debt. Yay. Because USPS, you know, the Pony Express. It's garbage. Garbage. Uh, I don't know. What do you got? 
Anything else but stupid? For like numbers? Yeah. I didn't read the whole bill. I'm gonna. I be mean, either. I don't, actually, I don't think uh, anyone made the whole bill. I can't. I can't imagine somebody's gonna author up, and a lot of this bill is a lot of grammar. Yeah. A lot. A lot of these bills they uh, amend a certain thing to say it this way or that way. Yeah. But uh, like multiple people must have written this thing. This it was. Cl- this Ulysses. This James Joyce of yeah, a freaking epic of a bill. Yeah, this, heroes. It has yeah, an epic heroes. name. It's it's the epic of Gilgamesh. <laughs> it's the epic of Pelosi. All right, and uh, oh, I do have one that I can end it off what on. You got? But, um, so with that aid money that states are going to receive, they are also being asked to up their Medicaid payments by fourteen percent. Medicaid is already like twelve percent of the entire GDP. So, so up gonna, it by fourteen percent of that. That's, yeah, fourteen percent. So now we're at sixteen percent of the. G- yeah, awesome. Yeah. So that is definitely the dumb thing that I'm going to end my list with. And that is going to be going to the Senate. I mean, believe today. Uh, I would hope so. Yeah, I'd hope so. so. I don't know. I don't understand how our Congress that we pay a buck seventy four every single year on paper to every single elected official, and they're not working. In fact, they just, I believe it was last week, passed a provision to allow proxy voting Mm -hmm. in the House and in the Senate so that somebody under instruction by another party can vote in their name, up to 10 people. Yeah, that's weird. That's weird. That won't be uh, manipulated at all. Negative. I'm sure. Seems legit to me. So our Congress is doing a great job in working uh, on our behalf. They're working hard. But uh, luckily, there is other news. Not good news, but other news. Because the world is still rotating around the sun at 16,000 miles per second or whatever crazy time. Um, a super cyclone is about to hit India. Yeah, which is wild. Today as or hell. tomorrow. So, what defines a super cyclone? Uh, cyclones are slower than hurricanes. Hurricanes have the categories one through five, mm. five bad. Cyclones are usually s- slower, so their one through five is not as severe. But it's like a Category 5 cyclone. Uh, hurricanes spin clockwise and cyclones spin counterclockwise because different sides of the hemisphere. Yeah. Uh, a million people are estimated to be evacuated in India. It's going to be hitting the Bay of Bengal. And that is not good for the, the coronavirus. No, because they're going to be put in these like large, massive holding facilities. Yeah. <laughs> And there's going to be a lot of destruction, and people will have not have good homes to go to, and they'll have to go to you know, FEMA-like you know, centers to reveal their lives. And the coronavirus. So India may be having some fun time in the near future. Yeah, stuff's go south. about to get wild in the Bay of Bengal. Yeah. India. Man, it's bad when like, that's a small thing. We can talk about that, but no, no, no. It's such a small fry to us right now compared to this crazy fucking... What's on the other side of the world? It's a little distant to us. Yeah, yeah. My 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 uh, it was in uh, how to win friends and influence people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, Dale Car- Carnegie. I a believe to- uh, a toothache today is is much more severe than a hurricane in China. Yeah, I don't care about a hurricane in China. My toothaches. <laughs> so the pain here is much worse than pain far away. Uh, yeah. On on other things, what was that? What was that? I just lost it on my head. Damn it. Um, I mean, I got a couple things. Don't talk, Tom. So, talk. Speak. So uh, as far as reopening goes, we're seeing a little message changing here. So the last time that we recorded a podcast and most of last week, the message from a lot of Democratic governors was, no, we need to lock down, save every life. The numbers that we're getting specifically from the states that have reopened are not bad, like maybe slight upticks, but nothing severe. Yeah, Georgia isn't falling into chaos. Yeah, like Florida isn't this hellscape that's been portrayed to be. So that being said, I mean, and noted these states, because we're mainly looking at Texas, Georgia, and Florida, they're warm weather states. And what we are seeing, though, is that the virus can't survive that well in higher temperatures, which is so a plus. So we need, we need uh, Illinois to open, or like like Idaho. Yeah, we need an like, – and, uh, Obviously, like, okay, North Dakota is a cold-weather state, but, yeah, but also nobody lives there. Live there yeah. Yeah. So, 
a lot of other you're starting to see democratic states like andrew cuomo is starting to open things in new york uh kentucky who has a democratic uh, governor is allowing like travel so you're starting to see them reopen stuff but at the same time you're also getting this message the messaging has changed instead of save every life it's reshape america it's like oh we want to rebuild america because three months ago was actually the worst America's ever been. Oh, yeah. It was the so worst we got to make America. it better. Uh, <laughs> there was this very bad man in a palace. He was yeah, very bad and very his orange. His complexion was you know, the color of the sun, of, of the sun setting, and it was awful. Uh, this is honestly, though, the first time I've seen the, the Democratic Party have a message that wasn't orange mad man bad in a while. And they're trying to mm-hmm. pin that on Joe Biden. Here's why it's bad. Joe Biden ran on like, hey, I'm not like cr- a crazy radical. I just want things to be like nice and normal and I'm a good politician. The way things were. Yeah. kind. Of, it's a very conservative message, too. And even when he addressed that, like his message was kind of like that. Um, he also raped uh, a woman. He also sexually sex assaulted a woman uh, in 1993. Yeah, it, if it's your fingers, it's not rape, according to them. Yeah, like, holy assault. Christ. Uh, anyway, so... And mainly it's like the Biden puppeteers are trying to like get him to espouse. And by trying to, I mean, he's just like his campaign is espousing. I like that word, espouse. Yeah, I love we it. We use it every single podcast, Espozo. I think. Espouse. Yeah. Um. Espouse. <laughs> Has Trump ever said espouse? I, I don't I'm know, sure but I'd like, I, maybe I've had three espouses. <laughs> but, um. <laughs> Mi esposo. <laughs> My esposas. Uh. So, like, for him to, they're basically saying, like, yeah, we want to, like, endorse all these programs. Like, let's pay people to learn how to code and let's pay people for all these wait, like wait, pay people to learn how to code yeah is that a quote from or... Rahm Emanuel yeah uh I believe six months ago learn to code was basically calling a uh, black person the n-word compared to journalists when they were being fired yeah yeah but they're saying it to truckers too like oh just learn to code so now all of a sudden it's like you know it's almost like trying to be fdr in the great depression where you just like give a people just throw money for anything pretty much um and at the same time uh stacy abrams like her people and her they've been lobbying hard to get that vp nod yeah well i don't know maybe joe uh breaks his promise and picks someone else that's not maybe and that it's not going to be a woman because he transitioned already. Oh, uh, boy. Mm. That, that'll be an f- interesting wrench to throw in there. <laughs> the first trans candidate for president. But here's the problem, though, with Joe, is that Joe is not confirmed to be the presumptive nominee for the Democratic Party. Yes. Uh, a communications director for the DNC was on an interview and said, quote, he's not the presumptive nominee nominee for the dnc and that's why they must have the democratic convention because they need to pick somebody and it's not guaranteed to be joe so what was the last year of spending money and competing and having joe take the lead and then it's not gonna are they gonna replace joe yeah that's a if that's not spitting in the face of democracy i don't know what is all these people that spent all this money and time and effort yeah you know canvassing uh, gotcha. It's not Joe. It's, it's, it's Obama. Third term. <laughs> Let's go. It's gonna be Hillary. Uh, it's her. It's her. It's her turn this time. It's her. Now it's her turn. Last time, you know, that was uh. How can you have any confidence if for the last I didn't like Joe, but you know what? I don't. I'm this, obviously number one. No Donald Trump, and I had to be real about my thoughts. And you know, Bernie was just too you know socialist, and Elizabeth Warren wasn't up to snuff. And Pete Buttigieg was gay. And, you know, Kamala Harris, you know, did shitty things when she was the DA. And Tulsi, well, she's a Russian agent. And now I pick Joe. I I, I see yep. the light. Joe is yeah, the after- candidate. <laughs> and then, no, it might not be him at the end. Might not. And we're we're going to see how it plays out. Um, I've definitely seen – Obama kind of like spearhead the Joe Biden He's cause. He's been talking a lot more than he did yeah. a, a month and a half ago. Because uh, he just recently did a uh, an address to you know the class of 2020 for high school. So I know like my sister watched it and she doesn't listen to my podcast, so I could say whatever I want. Ha. So uh, take that. But anyway, um, 
he was saying something to the effect of like, now I know it's scary when the people in charge don't know what they're doing, but you just got to trust your own judgment and together we can rebuild America. Like he's already saying the can't like, you know, the democratic campaign <laughs> saying jargon. the right words. Yeah. He's like saying rebuild the phrase build America, reshape America. It's like rebuild it in our image. Because uh, not in God's image, our image. Yeah. Wonderful. It's the Illuminati. <laughs> They're reptilians. They're here. Alex Jones was right all along. He was. God dang it. We just didn't believe him. <laughs> just didn't believe that poor water filtration salesman. <laughs> he was a good man. Yeah, so apparently maybe we went amend uh, the 20th Amendment. I keep forgetting which one it is. But uh, third term, Obama. Maybe, maybe it's Michelle. Maybe they actually push Michelle. You know, she's got star power. Yeah, she has tons People of star like power. People like her. I would not be shocked. And she she ain't stupid. No, she's a smart woman. Yeah, she law degree. She's probably the best debater they have. Like in their <laughs> arsenal. She sure ain't Joe. Oh hell no! That yeah, guy can't even talk. Michelle, Michelle Harris. Oh holy Christ! Obama Harris. That'd be an interesting term. Uh, Kamala Harris is so bad. Two strong though. black women who don't need no man. Dude, Kamala Harris put people behind bars for smoking marijuana. Yeah, in she's exchange a for money from private prisons. That's disgusting. Yeah, you're a slave dealer, L- literally. Yeah, that's. <laughs> uh, man, it could be Michelle though. Yeah, you know, I would not. That be actually shot. wouldn't be a terrible choice. No, it wouldn't. And, like, he, if and you she think could, about could it. probably compete fairly well with. Yeah, I think it would be a very competitive race. Yeah. I mean, what? dude, with everything that's happened in 2020 so far, it, nothing is I off mean, the table. It, it could just maybe they just select a ch- like 35, just some some woman. They just pick some person who just turned 35 this year. It's like, hey, you, just you, you. There you go, boom. It could it'd probably be better than Joe. Yeah, I agree. You know, you got to pay f- play fast and loose sometimes. Hey, Richmond High. And uh, yeah, that's our week right now. Uh, apparently Trump has been on hydrochloroquine the whole time, and he loves it. He loves it. You know, I don't know if if I'm supposed to hate Fauci or love Fauci. I don't. I, I'm getting too many. Where mixed did Doctor Burks go? Where did Scarf Lady go? She's still in there. I think I don't know. We quit watching the, day, the yeah, like updates. Admiral Polovchek. Apparently, we have a bazillion uh, ventilators. We're fine on that. Uh, we have all the gloves in the world. We have all the masks in the world. We got two masks in this house. We're yep. ready. I don't know. Like, what am I supposed to do? Um, what do I do, Tom? What do I do? Ignore the Rona. <laughs> like just, yeah, just barrel ahead through it. Alexander Lukashenko, president of Belarus, was right, and he's a good man. He's a good man. Belarusian soccer, <laughs> the real OG in all of this. Just don't worry about it. Mm. Uh, but, you know, as always, we will... Um, Destroy our sanity and pay attention to news so you don't have to. Yes, and give you the bullet points on the bullshit that is our present economic and political system. Take it easy out there.